on a rainy afternoon from NKU Soccer Stadium in Highland Heights, Kentucky. It's match week five in MLS Next Pro with FC Cincinnati 2 in search of its first victory of the season and New England Revolution 2 hoping to make it back-to-back -back victories in the early going. Both teams coming off a long layoff. Each team has only played three matches. They've had 10 and 11 days off respectively between their last game and tonight and they hope to get things kicked off on the raw on the right note heading into match week five here today fc cincinnati 0 two and one lost on the 28th of march to new york red bulls two and new england revolution coming off of their first victory of the season a 2-1 win over carolina core let's take a look at our early season standings in the Eastern Conference, you see Inter-Miami 2 pacing everybody atop the conference. New England Revolution 2 right on the outside of that cutoff line. Obviously, still plenty of time, especially if you're FC Cincinnati all the way down there in 14th. One of a handful of winless teams in the Eastern Conference to start this season. Now let's take a look at our starting 11s. First for Tyrone Marshall in his third season at the helm. They play a 5-3, or 3-5-2, excuse me. And this is how they're going to line up here today. Foster, Schaefer, and Jaber on the back line in front of Hunter Morse, who led Division I in save percentage while he was at Western Michigan. Castellano and Stitz up top, and you see a crowded midfield featuring Amir Daly as well, who Tyron Marshall was very complimentary of this week when we spoke. Now for Richie Williams, who is the interim head coach for New England Revolution first team last year, has been part of the organization going on six seasons now. It's his first season as the head coach of the second team. Fry, Bialyats, and Diaz up top with Oliveira and Leal in the middle. Barry, Souza, Suarez, and McIntosh on the back line in front of Weinstein. You can see the rain coming down heavily on this turf field. We'll see how that affects things. They'll play through this. We just got to root for no lightning. These two coaches know each other very well. Spent some time together. The previous stops along the way, they were together in Salt Lake. As we're underway, Cincinnati in the blue, New England in the white, and it's Ben Stitz who has one of the goals this season for FC Cincy getting things started. Revolution top five in MLS Next Pro in possession. That can break you down in a lot of ways. Tyron Marshall said he wants his squad to come in, set the tone early, and we'll see how weather affects things. Patrick Leal in the middle for Revolution. Leal in his second season with Revs, too. These two teams back on April 30th of last season played to a 5-5 draw. To date, it's the highest scoring MLS Next Pro game. Leal has it go over the touchline, courtesy of Gail Jaber. Throwing for Cincinnati. Stepping up in front of that is Victor Souza. Led the team in minutes played last season. And it's sent back for the keeper, Max Weinstein. His third straight start, had five saves in the opener. And a loss to Philadelphia. A New England Academy product. Malcolm Fry plays it back for Leal. And slow start to this one. A little bit of a feel-out process. Maciel, the Brazilian, sends it to the far side.
Now New England resets. You can already see in the first couple of minutes, New England is going to possess it for quite some time in this match. It's an area they excel. Hurst has run Barry. Has his pass taken away. Started up for Cincinnati. Tyron Marshall said that, you know, this team has worked with different formations. They've changed things up, consistent with what the first team does. And despite the fact that they haven't earned a victory yet, he says, generally speaking, he likes the structure they played with, especially given the fact that you know, they changed the formation quite a bit. Here's a ball into the box, flicked around the header, and an early goal for New England. It's Marcos Diaz on the far post on a ball that bounced around in front of Hunter Morse. And in the third minute for the second straight match, New England jumps in front. It was Malcolm Fry who scored in the third minute last in their last game. And now it's Marcos Diaz who gets on the score sheet in the third minute today. So not the start that Cincinnati was hoping for. Tyrone Marshall said he wants to set the tone in the early going. Tone not set, I think we can officially say. And now they're threatening again. Fry into the penalty area, fires on. A lot of pace and a save made by Morse. Cincinnati on its heels to start. Fry got around Jaber and nearly made it 2-0 a minute after New England went ahead. So now a corner in the early going. Tyron Marshall said he wanted to get an early goal, not give one up. Both teams playing after a long layoff of over 10 days. That one punched out by Morse, kept alive though by New England. Edge of the 18, Souza turns and fires a looping shot into the hands of Morse. It's only the third match for New England, fourth for Cincinnati. England won 2-1 in Gillette Stadium on March 31st over expansion side Carolina Core. And it was thanks to an early goal in the third minute by Malcolm Fry. They get an early goal from Marcos Diaz tonight. That's how you want to play, out in front, especially on the road. Souza retreats. He's wearing the captain's armband tonight. Being hounded by the Penn State product, Peter Mangione. Diaz's first goal of the year. Malcolm Fry was the only goal scorer as a team for New England in the starting 11 tonight. Tyron Marshall, the head coach of Cincinnati, wanted to see his side eliminate some of the mental mistakes that have plagued them in the early going this season. first three games he feels like the team was very unlucky played well in the first match against Chattanooga he feels like there was a 10 minute span that lost the game there and they were leading against New York Red Bulls too and they made a few mental errors gave away the first goal on a mental error says there have been a lot of opportunities to get a result in all three hasn't happened but you look at the positive stuff and you continue to grow and limit the mental errors which have plagued them in the early season. Souza clears that over the touchline, and he is the captain. Richie Williams said that he's someone they look to to be a leader. Played a full season last year, as we mentioned, led the league, or led the team, I should say, 
in minutes played. Amir Daly, who Marshall spoke very highly of earlier this week. The Duke product puts it into the box for Stitz, who tried to turn and fire, but the shot was blocked by Souza. Barry back to get it, but he lets his keeper, Max Weinstein, pick it up. And Souza, very talented on that back line. 39th overall pick out of Duke last season in the Super Draft. And Richie Williams said, you know, two games in, first game they were disappointed in the result. They felt they deserved better in a match where they had four five players making their pro debut so he thought maybe nerves kind of reflected some inconsistencies in the opener against Philadelphia but a really good experience for the younger guys and they improved on a lot in game two they wanted to create some more they were able to do that in the first game he said they had issues getting stretched they played right into Philadelphia's hands they had some breakdowns but again against Carolina core they got better, and now for the third game this season they've played in, they've scored the first goal. Now it's about how can they maintain it. The young players playing with consistency, not lose concentration over the whole course of 90 minutes, which Richard Williams said was not a strong point of the first match this year. Instead of playing through that adversity, and that's something he saw in the victory over Carolina. Rain is coming down here in Kentucky. Decorated program at college soccer. Some former Division II champions now playing in Division I Horizon League. Jaber. Well, Brian Schaefer, who was picked 27th overall out of the University of South Florida in Tampa. He's a fellow USF Bull. Things you love to see. Almost stolen away there. Schaefer played for Bob Butehorn at USF. Became the 27th player in program history to be taken in the MLS Super Draft. It's a very good program built USF men's soccer. George Kiefer, the head coach there for a number of years before moving on to NC State. And then Butehorn followed it. one nothing New England on the goal by Marcos Diaz in the third minute, second straight match, and third overall that New England scored first, but second straight they've put up a goal in the third minute. Hope you have your umbrellas. I feel like I need one just watching this. And again, you wonder how it affects things on a turf field as opposed to natural grass. Field may hold up better as far as mud and things of that nature, but as far as the ball and controlling it, maybe a bit more slick on the artificial turf. A referee, by the way, Eric Tattersall. Jackson Krauser is assistant referee one Eric Burton assistant referee two and Kevin Fakar is our fourth official
Maciel in the middle for Cristiano Oliveira. This pass takes a deflection, rolls over the touchline, and a throw in for New England. That is a torrential downpour. Maybe even makes that first goal all the more important. See how it continues to affect the run of play here tonight. This portion of the match is brought to you by MedPace, an official partner of FC Cincinnati. Down the left side. Since you're looking for the equalizer into the box it comes the header was deflected not cleared away yet and now they call a foul on Cincinnati. All the way down on Hunter Morse, the Western Michigan product. Nico Ben Alcazar. Former NYC FC product in his first season with FC Cincinnati. But Alcazar gets it back. Steven Jimenez reverses fields to the near side. Settled down by Jaber. Daly looking for Mangione. Gioni wins a throw in. Daly will take it instead. And it is really coming down right now. A lot of contact there in the box. They let it go. Flick towards the penalty area. Daly back into the middle on a one touch cross, but. Nobody home in navy blue. Daly plays it again. Look at that athleticism. Ben Alcazar. This is Mangione, the cross. Again, nobody home, but Ben Alcazar gets it back. And now it's cleared away. Schaefer. Let's see Cincinnati now with some possession. Threatening, looking for the equalizer. Stitz almost found an open man, but they will get a corner. You can see Jesus Castellano look to the sky. He knew he was open if that ball got to him for a golden chance.
In swinging corner from Mangione. You can see how the weather affected how the keeper Max Weinstein played that. FC Cincinnati will look to spoil Toronto FC 2's home opener this weekend when they travel north of the border to take on the Canadian side at York Lions Stadium. Coverage begins at 2 p.m. Eastern right here on MLSNextPro.com. Could this be a chance? Mangione save made. Daly coming up on it and deposits the rebound. The excellent start to Amir Daly's career continues, his second goal. And he levels us at one in the 19th minute. Mangiani put a good ball on goal, and again, not able to corral. That was Weinstein. He couldn't get over to the other side, and Daly was all alone to come pounce on that rebound and bring us 1-1 apiece. It's a great answer by FC Cincinnati after the early goal by New England. And New England scored in the third minute, and they were dominating possession in the early going, and then since he settled in, They've been able to capitalize to bring us level. Leo went down. Courtesy of Daly, and Leal gets the benefit of the whistle. No one will look at answer. The tackle by Jimenez, and now Mangione. Trying to counter. Maciel right behind him. Mangione to the left side for Castellano. Castellano fires on. And Weinstein with the stop. Collision there. Daly goes flying again. Stitz now on Souza. Mangione flicked for Stitz, but it never got to him. Barry able to clear it away. All the way back to Hunter Morse. Whistle and a foul against New England. Twenty third minute goals in the third by Diaz by Daly in the 19th. Jabert to the far side. Cincinnati has really taken over this match over the last 10 minutes or so. Pro 
approaching the halfway point in half number one. Josh Appel with you. Thanks so much for spending part of your Wednesday with us as we kick off match week five in MLS Next Pro. Turned over. Leal leaving through traffic. Long ball down the left side for Malcolm Fry, but it eludes him well out of his reach and Morse out to play it. Stitz on the through ball. Souza and Barry come over to cut it off. But it is a corner. This portion of the match is brought to you by TQL, official logistics partner of FC Cincinnati. for it. Leal, a little bit too strong, but again, you can maybe hypothesize that he wasn't able to control that because of the turf and how the ball slides in this wet weather. Menez onside apparently. Stitz now. Rolls on goal. And Weinstein, again in his third straight start. We'll get it started again in the pouring rain here in Kentucky. Foul there. Cincinnati doesn't like the call. Brett Halsey with the contact. Turned over at midfield. Daly making a run. Instead, it's Stitz for Jimenez. Castellano back for Jaber. Leo looked like he had his jersey pulled. And the official, a referee, says, don't come talk to me about that. Looked like he might have had a point. Regardless, here in the 28th minute, we remain tied at one. And it'll be a goal kick for Hunter Morse. Hey, 
Revs 2 travel to the Big Apple this weekend to face NYC FC 2 at Belson Stadium. Our coverage begins at 7.30 p.m. Eastern right here on MLSNextPro.com. So both teams had a 10-plus day layoff, and now they've got two games in the same week, Wednesday and Sunday action for these two clubs. Diaz got the scoring started early in the third minute for New England. And then Amir Daly with his second goal of the year in the 19th tied it up. Player down at the moment for Cincinnati. That was Banal Gozar. And he gets play going again for Jaber. Who won a national championship at Clemson last year. Daly, the goal scorer, with speed through the middle. Daly into the middle. Spinning. Mangione lost it. Looks like a good buildup, but. Couldn't quite get it going in the final third. Dangerous ball, flicked towards the back post and then headed away. This portion of the match is brought to you by First Financial Bank, the official bank of FC Cincinnati. Free kick here for FC Cincinnati 2. Gail Jabert just picked up a yellow. Not quite sure what he did to earn the yellow, but hey, as long as he earned it, that's what counts. <laughs> Battle on that far touch line, won by New England, played for Lille. still coming down not as hard as it was earlier but still very consistent in the 32nd minute one goal apiece Cincinnati in search of its first victory New England trying to make it back to back Leal trying to chase it down but he's cut off by Schaefer fires it towards midfield Foul.
throw in here for New England and this match has really turned on its head. New England hasn't been able to do all that much since they scored in the first three minutes. Dominated possession in the early going but Cincinnati has controlled this match since then. Some extracurriculars over there on the side. Things could get testy in a moment. Daly went down, took a physical spill. Courtesy of Ezrin Barry. So let's take one more look at what happened. Whoa, there was a headbutt there. Unbelievable. I didn't see that at first. And that will earn a red. Well, that everybody learned after Zinedine Zidane that headbutts weren't allowed. But now New England will be playing down a man for the rest of this match. An ill-advised play. And you can see why Barry might have been a little perturbed at Amir Daly, but that's no excuse for headbutting an opponent. And there might be some further discipline, even more than just the red. Let's take one more look at what happened. Daly and Barry get tangled up along the touchline. Barry. Gives a little bit of a shove in the upper air, upper neck area, and then <laughs> Barry comes over and headbutts him. It's one thing to go nose to nose, it's another to headbutt. And for Barry, he'll find himself on the bench the rest of this one, and maybe a little more after this. So it was a dream start for New England, and now it's turned into a nightmare. Down a man for the final 55 minutes of this match on the road against a team hungry for its first victory. You know Richie Williams will not be happy. Jaber. With Daly. And for the record, Daly did get the yellow, and that was deserved as well. And he got physical with Barry, but again, no excuse for the headbutt that followed. I think that was well handled by a referee this evening, Eric Tattersall. Cincinnati's played two home games already this year. 0-1 and 1. Lost in PKs to Chicago in the season opener, then got shut out at Chattanooga the following week. Daly was looking for the long ball, but a little bit too far out of his reach. One one our score, but New England now down a man after the headbutt and subsequent red against Barry. We'll see how Richie Williams changes his strategy. And we'll see how aggressive Cincinnati might get playing up a man. Schaefer slides it across for Isaiah Foster. Back for Schaefer, the USF Bull. 
Jaber, national champion with Clemson. Third straight appearance, native of France. Jaber. Jimenez now. Sent towards the penalty area. Took a high bounce, but was taken away by Daly. Nice flick forward. Here's Stitz back for Daly, and Daly hits the crossbar. Bar down. Cincinnati leads. That's two for Amir Daly. A shining star for FC Cincinnati, too, and Tyrone Marshall. His strong play this season continues. A great give and go here with Stitz. Bar down and in. He just took the headbutt from Barry of New England and just a few minutes later scores the brace. This match has certainly turned. It looked like New England would be well in control, but it's been a cavalcade of errors for the men in white since the opening 10 minutes. They've conceded two goals. They've taken a red, almost turn it over here. Weinstein flip, uh, slips, excuse me. They're able to get it out of harm's way for the moment. Malcolm Fry. Leal had his pass deflect. Nice back heel flip, but, I mean, the guy has been everywhere. Amir Daly able to clear it out and force the throw in. Leal into the area. Headed away. Diaz close to it, but it's cleared off the line by Halsey. Souza keeps it alive for New England. And now Jimenez for Cincinnati. Stitz, who just assisted on the other goal. The second one. Jaber for Daly, who has a brace. Across to the front post, and it's gobbled in. Mangione looks to the assistant referee and asks for clarification. Maybe thought he was fouled on his way in. Stitz fires on, diving save made. Stitz has had a strong first half as well. Second round pick last year by DC United. They finished second for FC Cincinnati in goals a season ago. Has won this year, has an assist on Daly's second goal as we wind down here in the first half.
Towards the back post and off his line to punch it out was Weinstein, but it comes back for a long range shot that whistles high over the bar. I think Weinstein might have gotten a piece of it as well. There's the punch out. Collides with Massiel. And then, yeah, he did get a piece of it. Might have been going high anyways, but he wanted to play it safe and make sure. <laughs> Off the corner, Mangione. For Castellano, pressured along that far side by the New England goal scorer Diaz, and Diaz takes it away, battling and jockeying on that touch line, and it's Diaz away with it. Still in, then Jimenez ushers him to the turf. Diaz down in a heap of pain, and it'll be a yellow on Jimenez. Third booking joins. Jaber and Daly, each with a yellow. Foul here on New England. So we'll have four minutes of added time here in this first half. Goals by Diaz for New England in the third minute. And a first half brace 20 minutes apart for Amir Daly, 19th and 39th minute. And he's also taken a headbutt, which earned Hezron Barry a red card for New England. Speed into the area, but that turf a bit too quick, and Halsey lost it for a goal kick to New England. Coming up at half, we'll check in with the Generation Athetis Cup. Crown the champion in the U15 division. We'll take a look back at the U17 championship as well. And we'll tell you about Aaron Ridley and her journey into becoming an MLS coach in San Jose. That's all coming up at the half, along with our schedule of highlights and stats. So stick with us. Leal. Diaz, one touch for Fry. Fry with room, looking for the equalizer, down a man. Malcolm Fry to the edge of the 18, stepped into it, deflected and never got all the way through. Fry gets it in, gets it back. Maciel, the Brazilian. Diaz, the goal scorer, closed down on and turns it over. 
and you can see the frustration starting to mount here near the end of the half. Andre Bialyets with a foul. Jimenez and Daly not pleased. So B. Elias picks up a yellow. Just awaiting the final whistle here in this first half that was dominated early by Revolution 2. But since, it's been all FC Cincinnati at home in the rain. A first half brace for Amir Daly. And there is the final whistle for half number one. Our score at the half, Cincinnati 2, New England 1. Halftime is coming up after we check in with the Generation Adidas Cup. Crowned a champion in the U15 division. Our good friend James Hadnot tells us more. Today we crowned a champion on the campus of IMG Academy at the 2024 Generation Adidas Cup U15s. Valencia, Toulouse, and Mark makes it happen as he's done all tournament. But it's the spacing before he gets on the ball. It's Santi who comes central and it's Mark that breaks the line with his run. The way he just opens up his hips, so clean, so classy, 1-0 Valencia. And then insurance always necessary in a final. Stepping up is Amadou. What a strike. As Jay requires so much attention, he plays it right into the path of his number nine. There's information on it. He needs to hit it first time. Just ropes this thing in the top corner. That's two goals for Valencia. And more importantly, they are your U15 GA Cup champions. Valencia victorious. The final 2-0 over to lose. Thanks to James Hadnot, Ricky Lopez Espin on the call there. The U-17 championship match came down to a shootout. David Goss has the details. You couldn't ask for a better final here at the 2024 Generation Adidas Cup. The clear two best teams, a clash of titans, a clash of styles as the Philadelphia Union against the LA Galaxy. Diego Rossio gets the scoring started once again for the third straight game. Fantastic technique from Rosio to let this thing come across, but it's a reaction from the Galaxy. As Miller goes by line, the space is the cutback. Clever run from Moreno. Get it on target. You give yourself a chance from Vanny. It's an uh-oh moment for Atkinson, but it's 1-1 at this point in time. Dylan Vanny equalizes just two minutes later. Adam Dunbar gets on the end of this one. Cannot finish. Mati Albert follows it up, and Dunbar with the go-ahead goal. There to clean it up. But Atkinson, you want to carry it wide and away from pressure. 2-1 LA Galaxy, but you knew the Union will never go down without a fight. First it's Sidey, then it's Johnson, and just watching the center of your screen. It's Sullivan. Johnson has the composure, the patience to let this play develop. And the ongoing run to advance yourself as a midfielder is so important for Sal Sullivan. Little dance from Johnson. Thank you very much. 2-2, David Goss. Gavin Sullivan equalizes, but regulation was not enough to get between these two teams. And we went to a shootout. Atkinson with the massive save to keep his team alive. Neil Pierre scores it in the sixth round. Securis puts it over. And back-to-back -back GA Cup championships for the Philadelphia Union. Thanks to David Goss and Ricky Lopez Espin. Fantastic time down there in the Generation Adidas Cup. You know, we talk a lot about the path for the players through the MLS system, but the path for coaches is equally important. Let's meet Erin Ridley and her journey into MLS coaching in San Jose. Okay. 
Uh, my name is Erin Lycan Ridley, and I'm the head coach of the U15 boys here at the San Jose Earthquakes. I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee originally. Uh, I was a multi-sport athlete. I played uh, soccer, of course. I played softball, basketball, tennis, swimming, cross-country track. Um, so a lot of different sports, but fell in love with soccer, and that was the one for me. Like so many kids, Erin's introduction to the game came through family. I started playing soccer at the age of 11, and my brother and I joke because my mom signed him up first, and he's younger than me, and of course I couldn't let my younger brother do anything competitively that he was doing that I wasn't doing. In 1994, the United States hosted the Men's World Cup, which boosted the popularity of soccer around the country. It wasn't long after that that we had the 1994 World Cup here in the United States, and I was completely captivated. I was 11 years old for the 94 World Cup, and um, definitely fell in love with the U.S. team at that point and followed the game ever since. Erin played as a goalkeeper, falling in love with the position early. She attended the University of Virginia, where she was part of the number one recruiting class in the country. Unfortunately, during her time in Charlottesville, Erin suffered numerous injuries, which steered her in the direction of becoming a coach. I was really lucky that I went right into college coaching after I was done with with playing and, and I fell in love with it for its own sake. Coaching would lead Erin back to her hometown, where she would coach the women's team of one of MLS Next Pro's newest clubs, Chattanooga FC. So I was the head coach of the Chattanooga FC women, which is in the WPSL. And that was an incredible experience for me. One, because that's home for me, Chattanooga's home. So it kind of felt full circle coming back. My first impression of her was was that she, um, first of all, knew the game very well at a super high level. Um, even back then, that, that, was, that was super clear. My husband and I moved back to my hometown to help me recover, and I was really lucky to get into that community and become the head coach there. And the first year was really challenging. It was all local players. I had been uh, coming back from this, this brain injury and only had gotten back on the field in time to get open tryouts. And they were the most amazing, bought-in, hardworking women, and I had players from 16 to 32. I had young mothers on the team. I had high school players on the team. I think we won one game that year, and that set the foundation for the next year. And the following year, we had not only the sport of community, the Chattahooligans there are incredible, um, but we had, I was able to recruit nationally, and we brought in top players, and we were able to make an incredible run and put together, but it started with that first year, and this like spark and love of the game, and one of my favorite parts about that is how many of those women have continued to play, they extended their careers, or even that they're now coaching, and I think that's a huge mark of success from, from that time. She expects a, a lot out of her players, she expects a, a super high level of, of commitment and work rate, and all those great you know, qualities that you'd expect in a strong player. But, um, but at the end of the day, like there's, there's compassion there to where the players knew, they always knew that she cared about their best interests. Um, so even when she pushed them, um, it, it was from the right place and everybody always knew that. Erin also coached at Baylor School, a boarding school in Chattanooga. While on staff at Baylor School, Erin coached Darrell's oldest daughter, Zoe. As a parent, what, you know, whether your, your kid's in athletics or not, you want them to be around teachers and coaches who, who care for them as human beings first. Um, I don't think anybody puts their kid in sports for any other reason than to have them mentored and, and nurtured. And, and I, I saw that as a parent. Um, it, you know, Aaron is the kind of coach that, that you want your, your kid to play for. Um, and then on the professional side, she's the kind of coach you want involved in your organization because of everything that she stands for. Her level of excellence that she expects of, you know, not only her players, but of herself. She's constantly been growing. You've seen that in, her, in the way her career has evolved. Erin's time at Chattanooga FC is remembered fondly for her impact on and off the pitch. A coach of her pedigree will always draw the attention of U.S. soccer. In 2018, the U.S. U-17 girls national team was preparing for the World Cup and Erin was asked to help out. During that time, she met Luciano Fusco, a member of the Quakes organization, and Andreas Deza. Andreas was the girls director at the time and uh, had worked with Luciano for a long time. Um, and they were in a transition moment where Luciano was actually being, um, he was being pulled into the boys' side. And when we were on the trip in South Korea, Andreas had mentioned that he needed a coach and um, he wanted me to come check things out and I, my husband and I flew out and we were really blown away by our visit that we had here and it was, it was amazing. So I came in, I was named the U19 head coach 
Uh, I also took over the U17s and I was also doing the goalkeepers as well. And it was a really special environment. We had so many top players in that group. We won a national championship with the 15s. We were the we were the coach of the, you know staff of the year uh, for the DA on the west west side. I think it's been a really unique experience being the first female head coach for the MLS platform. Like that is that is something that I really am humbled by, and I don't take for granted ever. Like having the opportunity here at the Quakes to coach at a high level on the women's side and then come in and coach at a high level on the men's side um, has been really special to me. While inspiring others isn't what Erin set out to do when she began her coaching journey, her path has made her an inspiration to many. Hopefully women see what I've been able to do and feel like they belong here and that they, um, they, they see themselves there as well. And, and not only that, but that the young men that I coach also see that as normal as well. And I have a great relationship with the guys that I coach here and I'm, I'm very, very proud of them. And it's very rewarding to be their coach. I was really struck by a conversation I had with a parent that said, look, it's so important. You always hear as a woman, it's so important for women to hear, to see women, to see it, to be it. But I had a parent in, Chatt in Chattanooga, Tennessee tell me, it's so important for my son to see you. And I, I never forgot that. It really changed the way I looked at things is that not only is it important for women to see uh, other women doing things that they aspire to do, but it is important for young men to see that. And I take that responsibility very seriously as well. Erin is vocal about more opportunities being afforded to women in sports. I think the landscape has changed in that there are certainly more professional opportunities for women across the board. The, the level of professionalism on the women's side has been increasing exponentially over the last 20 years and we're seeing huge gains from the way that women can use the platform to um, make a career out of playing and then make a career out of coaching. We're seeing um, how normal it is to see female referees uh, taking the lead. We're seeing um, female strength coaches and female nutritionists, uh, analysts. We're seeing lots more women involved in staffs. I would say that if you love the game, that there's a place for you. And when it comes to coaching, it's about giving back. I think that one of the, my favorite parts of coaching is that I know what was transmitted to me and the passion that the people that I worked with, that they had for the game, and I know what it added to my love of the game, and I hope that I can continue to pass that on. So my message to women is that they belong on the sideline, they belong in the game, and that they have a voice that is valuable. And, and, and I think too often when they don't see themselves there, it's easy to tell themselves that it's too much work or they probably wouldn't be welcome there anyway, and, and that's just not true. And that they have the power to, to write their own story and to be part of something that um, they get to set the path towards. And, uh, whether it's coaching boys or girls, men or women, uh, you know, I think that the most important thing that women can see is just to get started. If they love something, if they have a passion for it, there's a place for them. Welcome back to one Cincinnati at the break. Let's take a look at our match week five schedule tomorrow and Friday. One game on the schedule Union two and Orlando City B at four o'clock Austin and St. Louis nine o'clock p.m. Friday a couple of matches on Saturday and then what a slate on Sunday. Starting at two. Taking you all the way up until midnight Eastern on Sunday. Now let's take a look at our first half highlights from tonight's game. It was a great start early for New England. A ball to the back post, flicked around in the rain, and then Diaz with the header. Second straight match that New England has scored in the third minute to take the lead. And they almost had another chance here. Malcolm Fry after Jaber overran it. Fry forcing the keeper, Hunter Morse, to make a big save. But then, it was Cincinnati's turn. Mangianisi, Mangiani, excuse me, with the shot, the rebound, put home by Amir Daly, his second of the year. He was not done, speaking of seconds. After this, uncalled for headbutt, 
earned Barry of New England a red. You'll likely be hearing more from more discipline after that, but Amir Daly unfazed by the headbutt. A first half brace on this beautiful give and go with Ben Stitz. Bar down for Amir Daly. And that made it 2-1 at the time. And that's where we stand now, heading into half number two. New England playing down a man the final 45 minutes. You see the shots on target. Cincinnati doubling up New England. Three yellows and then the one red for Revs 2. So just about ready for action in the second half. Obviously, you see we're going to have six substitutions. Love that. I'm going to get you all of them in just a moment. We get the okay to start the second half from Eric Tattersall, who's been a busy man through 45 minutes. And we'll see if Cincinnati playing up a man can hang on to their advantage. And again, we'll get you the full substitution slate in just a moment. Still trying to sort out our substitutions here to start the second half. But we can tell you. Yair Ramos, who has one goal, is in for Nico Benalcazar. And also entering for Cincinnati, Connor Stout. He replaces Brett Halsey. We've been talking most of the match about Amir Daly and what Tyron Marshall has said glowingly about him. You could say the same for Yair Ramos. He's been very impressed as well. Here's a ball towards the back post. And going down was Stout. Courtesy of the New England defender, Demario McIntosh.
Joshua Boma is in, by the way. It's his 22nd birthday for New England. Boma replaces Patrick Leal. McIntosh into the middle. Out of the reach of McIntosh, and it rolls over the goal line. Colby Quinones in as well for New England. Luka Borovic as well for the goal scorer, Marcos Diaz. So already down a man. And they've made four substitutions here to open the second half. Gavork Diarbian comes in for B. Elias. So I'll recap for you those for you one more time. So Diarbian comes in for B. Elias. Borovic in for Diaz. Bulma on his 22nd birthday in for Patrick Leal. Colby Quinones replaces Oliveira. And again, Barry took a red earlier, so he's out for the rest of the match. And New England playing with 10 men. And for Cincinnati, Connor Stout replaces Brett Halsey. And Yair Ramos replaces Nico Benalcazar. There you go. A little bit of housekeeping done. In no time possible. We only It only took us five minutes in the second half to get those for you. <laughs> Here's Santiago Suarez, homegrown with the first team in his first start of the year. Suarez trying to direct traffic. Now McIntosh. Long ball down the field. A race for it is on. And Isaiah Foster sends it away. It'll be a throw in for New England. Malcolm Fry. Now Maciel. His pass intercepted. Angioni and started the other way. Stitz dispossessed by Souza. And New England with some possession early in the second half, much like they had in the first. McIntosh pressured by Stout. Pass into the middle was stepped in front of by Cincinnati, but kept alive and then out of the reach of everybody in white. Foster plays it back for his keeper, Hunter Morse who's been solid since allowing the first goal. New England playing well, down a man at the moment. The Arban plays it to the far side. This is Bulma. Pass for McIntosh was cleared away by Stout. And all the way down, Weinstein off his line to play it. Suarez.
Maciel, creative to find some space. Castellano, Foster, pressured by Dearbian, and so they play back to Morrison reset. Mangione couldn't get it to Stout, but a foul called. Jimenez for Foster. Switches sides for the man with the brace tonight, Amir Daly. Daly to the edge of the 18, tried to slide it through, but it was cleared away. Miscommunication there. This portion of the match is brought to you by Allegiant, the official airline of FC Cincinnati. Jimenez picks it up, turns back. Kind of see some of that patience for Cincinnati here in the second half. Amir Daly with a first half brace and a first half headbutt absorbed. This was hockey. If this was hockey, he'd be closing in on a Gordy Howe hat trick. Foster. the box dangerous area sent on but right into the arms of Max Weinstein off the attempt by Jesus Castellano Those of you who are celebrating the end of Ramadan, we wish you a very happy Aid al Fitr. Fifty-ninth minute, and can't do that. I'm not sure what Santiago Suarez is throwing his arms up about. Can confirm you can't grab somebody by the jersey and wrestle them to the ground. By the way, it looks like the rain has settled down quite a bit since the first half. Uh, yeah, that would be a foul. 
Wouldn't be surprised. Yep, he did get a yellow as well. Foster. Yeah, here Ramos in blue 52. Was looking for a pass there. Instead, Cincinnati resets towards the back. Foster. Now Ramos ends up with it. A little bit too much for Stout. Ramos steps in front of it. Mangione looking for Stitz. He went down, and the Revs take it away. Long ball down the right side looking for Diarbin. He goes down. That's a foul on Foster. Suarez, Maciel, who struggled a bit today. New England wanted an initial foul there, and then Daly went down, and he gets the benefit of the whistle. And now a yellow on Dierbini. Dierbian, excuse me. Dierbian, who replaced B. Elias. Both those guys have yellows tonight. So a free kick from right around midfield. Comes Cincinnati with some space. It's Castellano. Now Stout. Stitz. Tried to get it through to Stout. Unable to. And McIntosh clears it away. Revs 2 travel back to the Big Apple this weekend to face NYC FC 2 at Belson Stadium. Our coverage begins at 7.30 p.m. Eastern right here on MLSNextPro.com. We'll see how long they'll be without Ezra Barry, who got a red card today after a headbutt. You would imagine there will be supplemental discipline there. Dangerous, well defended, and aggressive by Hunter Morris off his line to come meet that. Castellano lost his balance, had it taken away. <laughs> Daly has two. Tried to get it to Stitz, a little bit too strong. Now these passes, I wonder again how much the, the turf has to do with the lack of crispness at times.
Daly, edge of the 18, looking to cross it in towards the back post, but nobody home. Daly chases it down. Nobody home for Cincinnati. Stout, though, able to get there and keep it alive. This portion of the match is brought to you by Cintas, the official partner of FC Cincinnati. Into the middle, cut off though by Souza. Now Daly ends up with it. <laughs> Flicked in, Stitz. Souza gets there, and it results in a corner. Peter Mangione, the Penn State product, will take the corner. It'll be an in-swinger. Here it comes towards the back post. And missing on the punch was Weinstein. And they ruled that he didn't touch it. And it's a goal kick. I thought for sure that deflected off of New England. Fry again New England playing down a man after the red card in the 34th minute on Barry for a headbutt. Let's take a look back at that corner and see who got last touch. Maybe not. 68th minute. Sometimes your eyes fool you. I thought for sure Weinstein got a piece, but. That's why I'm here and not officiating the match like Eric Tattersall. In the direction there of Amir Daly, who has a brace too far for him. Something developing here for New England. It's McIntosh. That eluded Bulma. And that's sent over and well wide.
Ramos feeds it down the left wing. Stout trying to get there. He's unable to keep it in. Yeah, that one went over in a goal kick. So Connor Stout, who was brought in as a second half sub, is being taken out in favor of Moises Tablante, the former OCB talent. Interesting substitution from Tyrone Marshall. FC Cincinnati 2 will look to keep the good times rolling if they can hang on here and spoil Toronto FC 2's home opener this weekend when they travel north of the border to take on the Canadian side at York Lions Stadium. Coverage begins at 2 p.m. Eastern right here on MLSNextPro.com. That's Sunday. Aggressive by Hunter Morse, wins the race to it and got the clear. 73rd minute, no goals here in the second half. We had three in the first. Marcos Diaz in the third minute, put New England up 1 0. Amir Daly tied it in the 19th. In the 34th, Daly absorbed a headbutt from Erson De uh, Barry. Barry was red carded. And then Daly scored a brace in the 39th. And that's where we stand right now, 2-1. Tablante. Tried to get one on target, unable to. Foul nonetheless is Jesus Castellano took a spill. Tyron Marshall wants another yellow. Yeah, it's a good no card there, just a regular foul. Blante and Mangione stand over it. Mangione fakes, Tablante takes towards the back post, eludes everybody and stays in though. Jaber keeps it in, battling on that far side with Borovic.
Ramos sends one into the area. And grabbed out of the air by Weinstein. Dangerous area now for New England. Down a man, but they can't get the pass across for Fry. Alex Monis getting set to come in for New England. They will replace Malcolm Fry at the next opportunity. This portion of the match is brought to you by CTI Clinical Trial and Consulting, an official partner of FC Cincinnati. Monas comes in. Fry, the first teamer, comes out. Can New England muster up some magic? Down a man. They've been down a man for 40 minutes. And they've held serve at 2-1. Can Cincinnati get some insurance? I mean, we've seen in this league already this season. You think back to North Texas and the town. Just recently, the town was up a man, up 1-0 the entire match, and then North Texas at the death got it tied and then won in a shootout. So we've seen it happen plenty. We've seen it happen just recently in MLS Next Pro. This one's not over despite New England being down a man. So Alejandro Guido is set to check in for Steven Jimenez. Guido actually a player coach this season. So Guido enters. And Jimenez exits. Coming down the stretch here. Cincinnati in search of its first win of the year. New England trying to make it two in a row, but it would have to come in comeback fashion against all adversity, down a man. McIntosh can't catch up to that. Daly with two. Can he get to three? Can he facilitate three? Here's Stitz. Oh, just missed. That would have been cheeky. Let's take another look. Started by Mangione. Daly, one touch with his left foot and then sent it near the target with the same foot in his subsequent touch. That would have been on the highlight reel. Instead, we stay at 
That one centered, but again, Morse aggressive comes out to get it. Tablante, the former OCB member. Foster. Guido, watched by Maciel. Mangione with space and speed. Daly, they'll try the cross one more time. Tried to go back for Mangiani. It ends up back for Daly. Now Guido. Cincinnati looking for insurance in the final 10 minutes. Castellano out wide. Tablante's cross over everything. Daly. Into the middle for Stitz. Taken away. Stitz gets it back. Ramos. Tried to find Tablante, but not enough pace on the pass. Cincinnati hang on here. They're about seven minutes plus added time away from their first victory of the season. Boma into the middle. Stitz settles it down. Back for Guido. Guido and Daly play catch. The rain has stopped. It was pouring torrentially in the first half. They say play on. Stitz went down. Maciel to the far side. It's Dearbian. Getting around. Dearbian. Boma is open. Boma. Big save and cleared. Hunter Morse keeps Cincinnati in front. And now Castellanos can settle it down. <laughs> Tablante. Ramos. Jaber plays catch with Stitz. Tablante trying to get around McIntosh. McIntosh, a nice tackle.
Ramos. Maciel took it away. And now they turn up. Monis. Up ahead, Deer Bean catches up to it. Deer Bean. Too strong on that touch, and Schaefer able to step away and clear. Will Daly's brace in the first half hold up and give Cincinnati the win? Final minutes. Not much doing in this second half. Cincinnati has had a couple of chances, but other than that, nothing much. Stitz catching up to it. He's watched by Quinones. Right four on that far side. It's won by Dearbean. Schaefer. Nice job by Jabert to support and clear it away for a throw in for New England. We've got a whistle, though. And a substitution. Yanir Valois. Andrew Valois comes in for Peter Mangione, who had a very nice game. Very strong today, the Penn State product. Boma has a cutoff by Guido. Now it's Ablante. Tight quarters. Cincinnati handles it well. Sounding like we'll get three minutes of added time here, but we'll confirm with the fourth official once he puts the board up. Guido. Cincinnati can almost taste their first victory of the year. Castellano. Valois into a dangerous spot. Looking for Tablante. Tablante in tight quarters. And New England safe for now. Stitz. Valois, his shot blocked. Ramos, his attempt goes high. So now we get the confirmation. Three minutes of added time. Three minutes until Cincinnati can celebrate its first win of the year. Can Revolution pull off a miracle down a man? They've played down a man since the 35th minute. Guido, content to just Waste some time here, but a turnover. That's not what Cincinnati wants. But Daly, who's had such a strong match, comes over and steps in front of it. And then he's fouled by Monas, who picks up a yellow. Man, he has taken a headbutt today. He scored two goals. He gets tripped up there. Not happy about it. 
really worn it today. That's the fourth yellow on New England today, not including the red card. They had five bookings. Three for Cincinnati. Cincinnati in no rush. They're content to take it to the corner here and wait out this final minute. Throw in here for Cincinnati. And there is the final whistle. A workman's like win for Cincinnati at home. It's their first of the season on the heels of the brace by Amir Daly. Three goals this year, and it's no doubt that he is our man of the match presented by Adidas here tonight. Amir Daly got his first off the rebound in the pouring rain. That came in the 19th minute to level the score at one, and then this give and go with Stitz went barred down for his second. That was a few minutes after he absorbed a headbutt from an opposing player, Amir Daly, our man of the match, presented by Adidas. Our final score, FC Cincy 2 and New England Revolution 1. For our entire MLS Next Pro broadcast crew, I'm Josh Appel saying thanks so much for joining us. We will talk to you next time. Don't forget, you can watch MLS Next Pro all season long at MLS Season Pass on Apple TV, and MLSNextPro.com. Good night, everybody. This copyrighted broadcast of Major League Soccer may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.